Ryan Reese from Southern California. This is Live with Ryan Reese. Call now, 1-888-564-6173. Or post your questions using the hashtag LiveRyanReese on his Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. What is happening, family? It's another Saturday night, and it's, I'm just uh, stoked to be on the radio. Just a lot of cool things have been happening this week. I got Sean McKeon. What's going on, guys? In the studio. Um, you know what's interesting, Sean, is you know before we give the number out, actually, let's go ahead and give the number out. You know what? If, call me now if you want. It. The number is 888-564-6173. That's 888-564-6173. Go ahead and call in if um, maybe you're just driving down the highway and um, you, need some, you, need, uh, you need a word. I mean, maybe you've been struggling with some addiction Maybe um, maybe you've been having anxiety like this like this girl I met with the other night at Shine. It was this young girl at the end of the Bible study. Um, they came up to me and they told me to come back and pray for this this young girl. I think she was like uh, 14 years old. Oh, wow. So I went back there and it was like her and her mom and then like you know they had different family members and them around them around her and uh, they were they were praying for her for I don't know at least like 10 15 minutes or something and she was um. She was shaking, convulsing, you know, like her legs were like pounding up and down on the ground or her hands were shaking and she was crying. And I'm like, well, what's 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 going on with her? You know, and they basically said she's been having anxiety. Mm. So I go, is she a believer? And they said, yeah, she's a believer. And I'm like, OK, well, in my mind, I'm thinking, well, what is she into or what's going on with this anxiety in her life? So, um, you know, she was just she wasn't in a good place. So I said, look, this is the one thing that's going to work is that we just need to keep praying for this girl. So we all laid our hands on her. I think there was like five of us and we just were going around taking turns praying for her. And she was still um, shaking. Her legs were still shaking. Her arms were still shaking. And she was having these panic attacks. You know, I've I've seen people in this, yeah, in this state before. I have a couple before. friends about it with that, actually. Yeah, you could have like anxiety or panic attacks. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was witnessing this one right in front of me. So... We kept praying and, and it wasn't, she wasn't calming me down. So in my mind, I'm talking to God going, okay, God, you know, you, you know, I know in John seven, you say, you know, anyone that's thirsty, come and drink. Anyone that believes in me, come and, you know, drink the living water and I will give them torrents of living water. And when I think of torrents of living water, I think of this rushing river of, of the Holy Spirit. And we know when it talks about the, the living water in the Bible, it's the Holy Ghost. So I'm like, okay, God, your Bible says, if you're hungry or thirsty, come to me and I will give you the torrents of living water. So I go, okay, Lord, we're going to pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit because we know that the Holy Spirit gives us that peace and that rest. So as we're laying our hands, we're praying for him like, why is this not happening? How come she's not calming down? So I get, I looked at everyone. I said, okay, you guys, she hasn't calmed down. So let's just keep praying until the Holy Spirit shows up and calms her down. So we keep praying over her. And um, I just, you know, when someone else was praying for her, I was talking to God. I'm like, okay, why won't she stop? And I just felt like we need to pray for her mind. That some, she's being attacked spiritually in her mind. That she needed to bring her mind into subjection with Christ. So I just started praying. I'm like, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray that you, you take captive of her mind right now. Break any strongholds that the enemy, any kind of, cause it, all that anxiety and all that, that spirit of fear and all that stuff, we know that's from the evil one. We know that's from Satan. So these panic attacks and all this stuff. So we, I just started praying. I'm like, God, take care of her mind. Put it, put, uh, capture her mind. Draw a circle around her. Let that be the place of the Holy Ghost. Fill her with your presence of the Holy Spirit. Overflow her, Father God. And if there's any spiritual chains that are connected to this girl, break them in the name of Jesus. Cover her with the blood that was shed mm -hmm. on the cross. And I just kept praying, Lord, fill her up. Lord, fill her up with your Holy Spirit. Baptize her, God. Give her peace. Keep filling her, filling her. And I kept, I don't know why, but I kept saying, fill her up, God. Her. Fill her up, Father. Fill her up. And as we kept praying that, all of a sudden, like her, she started like shaking less. And then shaking less. As we kept saying, fill her up with the Holy Spirit, Lord. And it was like, I couldn't see what was going on, but I could see that she literally was like slowly calming down, slowly calming down. And I kept calling for the Holy Spirit until finally, till she completely stopped. And I did, I was like, okay, that's the God that I'm talking about. Because so many times we, we read stuff. And I've seen people in this situation that have walked up and prayed for someone that is in a panic attack or they're hysterical and they just pray for them and they don't stop. So they just walk away. I believe that the Bible is real. 
if the Bible says that he will give you torrents of living water and that the Holy Spirit is peace, then you keep praying for that person until you see God work. But you got to understand, we were there for like 20 minutes with this girl and she did not stop calming down till probably like the very end of the prayers till like the last like five minutes. And we kept praying, fill her up, Lord, peace, fill her up, peace. And then I just saw her slowly come down. And then it was interesting because she ended up texting me the next day or uh, actually instant messaged me on Instagram. And she wrote this thing. She said, thank you for praying over me. There was, there was a, um, there was really a feeling of calmness going through me and encasing me. I had, I have, um, I had feelings of serious emptiness and the prayer just filled me up and, and I'm such in a good mood and there was happiness that I haven't felt in a really long time. It's crazy to think that that's how fast God can work and heal. Some major progress has begun. Thank you. That's awesome. And I just, I, I you know, everyone has this. If you're a believer and you have the Holy Ghost, in you and you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, God can use anyone. But I just want to encourage people out there. Number one, if you're in this place like where this girl is and you're not maybe, maybe you're going to church, but you're not really like plugged in. You know what I mean? Like where you're reading, you're praying. If you're reading and praying, you're going to feel empty. You know, I, I went through something, you know, last last couple of weeks, you know, got crazy with my wife in the hospital, all these things. And my prayer time and my reading time weren't as much as I would like normally. But what I noticed during that time, dude, the enemy started coming oh, yeah. in. I started feeling a little bit empty because, you know, you don't have that fresh feeling that you need. And I felt the empty, the, the, the enemy, enemy coming in and messing with my mind. And, and I told her, I said, look, it, I was in a place last week where I've been doing a lot of different things, been super busy, and I haven't had that real time to pray and read like I liked you that last week. And I could see how the enemy came in, and I said I said to the girl, I said, if you're not praying, and you're not listening to worship, and you're not tuned in to God, you're going to feel empty. And that is going to allow Satan to come in, and you know whatever assignments he has for those demons, like you know uh, in Ephesians 6, it talks about, you know, right. about the spiritual realm, that... They're going to come in and they're going to fire those fiery darts and they're going to come and try to mess with you. Yeah. They're going to give you anxiety. They're going to, um, they're going to do all, they're going to tempt, you're going to be feel tempted. You know, there's going to be a lot of different things going on in your life. So you got to be tuned into the source. I would just say that God is able, you know, he, he is able to do great things in our lives as we, we submit to him. And I've just been reflecting back to, you know, the last couple of weeks, I've had a lot of stuff going on too. And, um, one thing that the Lord's really been placed upon my heart is just sticking to the basics, you know, mm-hmm. just, just being there, sitting at his feet, just loving him and just re- reflecting on all that he's done in my life. Because a lot of times um, you can get so busy, you know, there's going to be a lot of pressure in your life at times. I know I go through a lot of stuff and I need to have that time where I can just reflect on the goodness of God. And when you start reflecting how good God is and the assurance I have in him and and being in his word, those, those foundational truths seem to come up into my life and really make me to be on that rock, you know. So when those storms come, I'm able to to make it through. And that's an amazing story about that girl, because um, a lot of people battle with anxiety, um, some, you know, from the pressures and everything of this life, some because of the fallen world, man, people have. Those are one of the areas that people struggle with. I have a couple of close friends that are like on point, like hustlers, Mm -hmm. and they get hit with these bouts. And it's a place where the enemy does try to bring fear um, and all of these weird things that they got to go through and where they're broken, crying on the road. I've had a close friend of mine that that battles with stuff, but putting on worship music, sitting in the car praying is always the healing. You know, uh, one thing that I've always been taught by your dad is that when people come in for prayer or whatever, the great counselor is the Lord. Like, we're just men. We're just people that are going to direct you into the Lord. But Jesus himself is the Prince of Peace. And I think that that focus of praying for that, that young girl in her, her state is an amazing thing because the Lord is able uh, to heal. If you guys are tuning in, this is Live with Ryan Reese. Um, if you want to call in, maybe any questions, maybe going through a struggle or whatever it might be, you can call in at 888-564-6173. Again, the number is 888-564-6173. All right, we're going to go ahead and take uh, call three. How do you pronounce your name? 
Na- Naima. 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 Okay, because okay, how you doing, Naima? I always mess up I'm, names, so. Well, thanks. <laughs> it's okay. Um, so what's your question tonight? How do you get rid of anger? Like, um, I thought I was over anger, but somebody was, I felt like they were attacking me as a person, and I felt rejected, and I got really angry inside. But I I don't know where that came from. Right. And I don't know how to, I want to get rid of it because um, I'm planning to be a te- teacher and I don't want, to, what if I get angry at the kids, you know? Yeah. Ang- Good question. Ang- anger, yeah, anger is, um, I think a lot of people deal with it because there's things that happen in life <laughs> that can make you angry, uh, family, <laughs> friends, work, situations. Um, you know, I was just actually reading through Ephesians today and it talks about in, in the New Living Translation, it says, don't even let Satan get a foothold through anger. Mm-hmm. And that is that little foothold. Uh, maybe you're not caught up in drugs and alcohol and all these other things, but you, you get that, that little hook, that little foothold come in through uh, anger and that could turn your world into a crazy place. Um, we've talked about that a lot. Just uh, the anger is once you get so mad that you'll start seeing red and you could destroy people's lives with, with your tongue because <laughs> James says that your tongue is set on fire by hell itself. You could annihilate people, make them feel so small. But yeah. that anger that's inside of us, when you get that anger, it literally, you get sick, you get tired. You know, yeah, you can't. Yeah, the next day I got sick. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I know. Because when I go, when I get really mad, I'll get, I, I don't know, my body like kind of just turns off and I just get really tired after. And I have to sleep. But. How do I get rid of it? I mean, you know, I, I've went through some situations in the past couple of years um, that I've dealt with some anger, some things that have made me pretty mad. And honestly, you know, it was anger and forgiveness I had to deal with. And literally, you know, obviously you stay tuned in. No, no matter what, these are the basics, you know, prayer, stay into prayer, read the Bible, stay into church. Those are, those are the basics. But what I had to do besides that is I had to literally go to God daily and pray and say, God, Help me to forgive this person. Help me not to every time I see this person or I think of them, I want to kill them. You know what I mean? Like, I need you to literally remove this anger out of my life. And it was, it was an ongoing process. I don't think it's something that you, you pray and you're healed overnight. Um, I'm not saying God can't do that, but for me personally, it's, it's been an ongoing process. And honestly, over the last year, you know, God's done major healing through this anger, but, um, you, it's, it's, it's a God thing. It has to be a God thing, 100%. You just got to cry out to God and say, God, look inside, and, like search my heart. I think David said that. Search my heart and remove everything that's inside of me that you do not want from me. Anger, unforgiveness, and anything else that's inside you. And God is faithful, and he will, he will work out his purpose according to his will in your life. He will remove that stuff. Yeah, anger is a, definitely a tough one. All of us battle with it, you know, some more so than others. I'm, I'm a pretty mellow guy, but I have those moments where I can get just kind of vexed and like kind of in my spirit kind of. And I've had actually had it happen the last couple of days where I just felt like irritated a little bit. And for me, I always pray this, Lord, give me self-control. You know, self-control is one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit yep. that it talks about in the book of Galatians chapter 5. And I would ask the Lord, Lord, give me self-control because that's what it comes down to. When our anger comes out, we lose control. And when we do that, we say stupid stuff or we get in bad arguments and we just, we see it escalating. You need to identify at the moment, like this is my issue, this is my problem. And you got to take it to the Lord right then. Don't engage with the enemy. Get yourself out of that situation that's about to make you say things that you don't want to. Um, because, you know, words, man, they're, they're dangerous. They destroy. Right? And you can't, you can't take them back. Yeah. Um, this is a, a weakness, but identifying the problem is the beginning of, of healing. But it's always staying close to the heartbeat of God and recognizing this is a weakness in your life. It's a weakness in Ryan's life, my life at, at times as well. But the Lord, like, once again, He's able. And through all of this stuff, it comes to denying ourselves, you know, because ourselves, oh, we want revenge. We want to make somebody look foolish. We want to make somebody look stupid. But taking that, what the Lord desires us to do, I die. What I want to do takes a back seat. And I do what the Lord desires me to do. And that is to to love people. That is to have a heart of forgiveness and recognizing if I don't get in 
control my anger. You know what Jesus talked about? He talked about um, hate and anger being on the level of murder. And the re reason why he brought that up is like it's dangerous. It will destroy your life. And it's the beginning that can really wreck someone. So I, I would just really ask the Lord, you know, don't get frustrated because the enemy will want to discourage you like this is never going to fix. But it can. God is able, man. We're, we're, we're a new creation in Christ Jesus, but we got to reckon that old man and old woman to be dead, and you'll see the, the fruit of God. Cool. All right. Well, thank you for your call tonight. All right. We're going to go ahead and move to uh, Sacramento. We have Maria calling in. How you doing, Maria? I'm finding you. We're doing good. What is your question tonight? I wanted to know when, uh, when do you know that you're battling with your flesh or you're battling with the enemy? Um, when you're battling with the flesh or the enemy. Yeah, you know, like if it, if you're if a temptation is from the enemy or is it from your flesh? Yeah, I, I there's a, there's a there's a mix, you know, because the Bible says to not love the world because all that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. It's not of God, it's of the world. You know, Satan um, is of the world, right? The flesh that we battle with, man, it wants to partake of the things that he tempts us with. To identify if it's of the enemy and of the flesh, I, I guess it depends on, on the circumstance. Can you give me like a little bit of a, an example? Um, well, um, I would say maybe, okay, so you have anger, and then um, I guess you have maybe a coworker at your job that being part of that uh, issue with, um, I don't know. It's kind of hard to explain. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, well I, I, I would say that I will say off. they they work hand in hand. You know, for uh -huh. the for the most part, because the way that the enemy is able to get like a, a foothold in our lives at times or to wreak havoc on our lives is because um, it, of a weakness of our flesh. If you're saying like it's of uh, it's anger or whatever, you're having a, a battle with somebody. In the workplace, there's definitely spiritual warfare that is there. There are things that yeah. the enemy is trying to wage war on. Um, as far as your flesh, maybe if you're reacting in the way that is, um, you may anger, rage, or whatever. I mean, that, that is, you know, evidence of the flesh. And But the enemy is working in the, in the, the same time as well. Okay. It's but it's spiritual warfare. That's what it is. It's identifying it, and at those moments, you know, it's you pray. You you ask the Lord, Lord, like Ryan just said right now, Psalm one thirty nine is Lord, search me and try my heart. See if there's any wicked way in me. See see if there's something wrong with me. Um, if I need to get conviction in this area, and then take care of the problem, being led by the Spirit of God. And we we know that there's obviously the the power of of the Prince of the World, which is Satan. He's at work here. This is his home. And he has legions of, of, of demons that he has access to. So he sees the believers, and he's always trying to set us up for failures. So I, I do believe that he brings certain things into our life to help us to, to make us stumble or to tempt us. I mean, he's the tempter, you know. Mm -hmm. So he yeah. has... You know, if you are not, if you're not following God, then you're you're following basically Satan. You know, he he's he's the the power at work in peop, the, those people's lives. So he has control and he's moving things around and he wants to mess with with the believers. He doesn't want to make it easy for us while we're here on earth and then to get us flushed out. And then what happens when we when we get flushed out? Right. Anger kicks in. We see red and then it's on and cracking and then we just you know we do some stupid things. Yeah. But God, you know what? Just um. It's it's all about the the it's all about the spirit. Yep. Praying to okay. the Holy Spirit and say, God, make me mellow, search my heart, and help me to uh, not fall to temptation, and um, to to keep my peace and not go to anger. And God, God will see you through. I mean, the fact that you're struggling with this, you know, it's it means you're human and you're just like the rest of us Christians, you know. Okay. I would say, Marie, though, you know, if this is a situation in, in your workplace and you see it as an issue, just have a like a prayer focus, like even before you go to work, uh, throughout the week, you know, understand that going into the workplace, it's a, a spiritual battle. You're able to overcome any situation that is thrown your way when you're led by the Spirit of God. Okay. And it's not, uh, it's there's not it's not a problem either to uh, if you want to fast and pray. Throw some fasting times in there and, and see what God does. He, he shows up when, when you position yourself in that place 
of fasting and prayer. Okay. Okay, we love you. you, All right, Maria? All right, thank you. Love you, too. Okay, see ya. Take care. Okay, so the number is 888-564-6173. 888-564-6173. This is live. My name is Ryan Reese, and I have Sean McKeon in studio. We're going to be taking calls wherever you're at. If you're in Miami, where else do we have? Myrtle Beach, Hawaii. All over, man. um, Colorado, Arizona. Las Vegas, wherever you guys are at, call in. We want to hear from you guys. Yeah, and plus those that are watching online as well. You know, one thing with uh, Ryan, he always is teaching on Shine on Thursday nights at 7 p.m. and also at Calvary Chapel Golden Springs in Diamond Bar at 6 p.m. Both of those are webcasts. You can go to Ryan's uh, website, ryanreese.com, for all information. Ryan, I know Lacey's going to be coming in, in concert soon, right? February 4th, is that? Uh, February 4th, yep. We're doing, um, she actually, she's going to be doing her record release party. Uh, she was in the band Flyleaf. She was the lead singer, and then she left, took some time off, had some kids, worked with the Billy Graham Association, and now she's uh, going back to the mainstream to be that light in the dark world. So she's doing her record release party uh, at the Whiskey A Go Go. It's a concert venue in Hollywood on Sunset, and it's February 4th. And there's like VIP tickets if you want to meet and greet. And then there's actual just general admission, which is like $15 tickets. We're all going to be up there hanging out and uh, just just seeing what God wants to do while we're up there. But, yeah, we, we want to invite one, invite all, bring your friends, family, uh, kids. I think it's, it's an all-age event as well. Yeah, it is. It's so all bring ages. your savage kids out yeah. there. All ages, 8 p.m. <laughs> and uh, you can go to Ryan's website, ryanreese.com, for all the information for that also, the high school tours are, st- are still going off. I mean, we have some up up to speed, but make sure that you keep on calling in, and we'll love to go out to uh, your high schools. Uh, Ryan, why don't you update? Oh, the we people? we do have a we do have a high school coming up. Uh, Chino. Yeah, we're going to Chino High School, yeah. and I don't know. I think it's like next week or something. Yeah, I think it's uh, the week after. Or yeah, it's coming yeah, up. It's yeah, the yeah, next it's... week or the week after. But we're going to Chino High School, and this is the f- only high school. That I know of right now that actually has a trans a transgender uh, teacher. Yeah. So basically, I think last year the teacher was a guy, and then he left for the Christmas break and came back as a girl. Mm-hmm. So um, it's it's pretty heavy. That's I mean it was in the New York Times. Right. Crazy, I remember that happened last year. Yeah, crazy uh, crazy time. So we're actually going to this school and we're we're setting up um stage and we're gonna give the gospel and you know see hopefully he's there. We'll tell him how much Jesus loves him and. See what happens with all those kids. So keep us in prayer um, weekly for these events. We're in the process of actually buying a sound system. Sick. So we, you know, we, we've been letting people know, hey, you know, and if you're listening and you feel like you want to give to us getting a sound system, we, we're getting a full sound system. So we aren't going to be limited by budgets anymore. Instead of having to rent sound systems every high school we go to, because you know we're going to one every other week, but we're going to try and step it up to one a week or even two times a week, so we can hit more high schools in the in the Southern California area. But if you feel like you want to give to that, go to the whosoevers dot com and go to the donate button and um, help us uh, buy a, a sound system. <laughs> That'd be amazing. That'd be amazing. <laughs> so yeah. sick. You know, I, I think another thing, Ryan, because so many people are following on social media, a lot of people know what's going on with you because all of us go through stuff. You go through stuff. You're able to go teach and do ministry or whatever. But you go through stuff. Obviously, everyone out there knows that Ryan's wife is pregnant with triplets. Three girls. Three girls. Why don't you give the people an update? Um, well, let's see. We're, we were at 28 weeks last week. And the whole pregnancy has been high risk because my, wi- my wife's super small. And now she has this big old belly that's uh, 28 weeks. And it's we have two identical twins and a fraternal twin girl. So it's three girls. And um, basically, they wanted to come out. Early in the pregnancy, she started getting um, contractions, so they had to shut that down with medication. And she was on bed rest for like the last month and a half. And now she's actually they submitted her to the office or to the hospital, so she's there. And they're basically saying these things, these kids could come out anytime in the next month. Mm. So we're just praying that they stay in inside for another month, and then they'll be coming out, and then it's going to go. Crazy, life, I guess. It'd be, a, it'd be a life change. I set up three cribs at our house. <laughs> I saw the picture. It got real. <laughs> I was like, every time I walk up the stairs, I look in the room, and I'm like, yep, that's three cribs. <laughs> and then I go out to my garage to get in my car, and there's three car seats. I was uh, driving uh, back from the store today with my three kids, and we were having a crazy day with my kids. They were going nuts. And I looked at my wife, and I'm like, 
They say that boys are harder when they are kids, right? And they get easier when they get older. Girls are easier when they're born and young kids, right? And just so you know, but they get harder when they get older. Absolutely. Oh, it's going to be <laughs> Well, we have girls, so I don't know. I don't know. I'm a psycho, so I'm going to probably have some, like, studious girls, you know, <laughs> 4.0. The opposite of me. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully amazing. they'll be like their mom. If they're like their mom, they'll they'll be smart. So <laughs> uh, I think we have, like, four minutes left. I'm going to go ahead and uh, grab this call from, okay. uh, let's see, we got... Oh, it's not even working right now. So we'll take this call right here with Rudy from Lake Elsinore. Rudy, we have about three minutes left. What's your question, man? Hey, Ryan. How are you guys doing today? Chill, man. man. How you doing? All right. I got it. Remember I called in about a week ago or two weeks ago, and I said that a friend doesn't know the Lord. I tried when you senior. her. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. How can I witness more to her? How'd that go? I didn't go good. How can I witness to her again? Oh, how can you witness to her? Oh, did we um, did we talk to you last week? A couple no, weeks it was ago. like a couple of weeks ago when Ronnie Fife was on. Well, I know uh, when I had um, when my when I met my wife, she wasn't a Christian. I just met her at church, and she was like searching, and uh, she she was like open to like she was a Catholic girl, and uh, what I noticed is she didn't have that connection with Jesus Christ. So I gave her a book to read. It was called um, Living Water by Chuck Smith, and I didn't want to force it on her, but I could tell she was kind of open to it. So I just gave her that book, and you know she ended up reading it like a month and a half later, and she found the Lord through that book. So just try and find some common ground. Is it, is she even interested in in Jesus? Is she interested in in music? Are there some music musicians she's into that are that are Christians? Or where can this common ground? Where can you meet her on this common ground? She's into the she's into the Christian stuff because I play a Pastor Brian Broder's yeah. sermons. Yeah, awesome. And um, the music-wise, I'm thinking about making her a CD and sending it to her. She did what? I'm making her a CD with, like, Phil Wickham, Cut List, Newsboys. So, so she's so she's open to Christianity? Yeah. Well, just just <laughs> talk to her about, um, ask her about, about uh, Jesus and the cross and what it means to accept the Lord into our life and actually have a personal relationship with her than, than religion. You know, that that'd be a good start to do that. Just just kind of share your heart. You know, I mean, everyone has a testimony. I mean, you have a testimony. Tell her about what God did in your life, where you came from to where you're at now. You know, I mean, that's 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 power. We have there's power in our testimonies because it's it is what it is. You know, do you recommend going uh, when God became one of us under her? Uh, what, what's that? Uh, 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 the 40 day devotion that Brian Broderson did. That Brian wrote. Yeah, I I haven't seen it, but yeah, it sounds good to me. Um, devotions are always good because you know what you know what's rad about little devotions is they're just little nuggets. That's another thing I, I give to my friends that aren't Christians. I'll send them uh, Chuck Smith's book. Uh, uh, what's it called? Words of Wisdom. Yeah, Words of Wisdom. Um, but wisdom I mean, for today. Wisdom for today. And I'm sure Brian Broder says is like the same deal. It's like one page. It's one verse, and then. Chuck gives a little nugget, and it's these cool little nuggets that like starts watering the ground, preparing her heart to uh, to to usher her into a relationship with Jesus. But yeah, a devotion would be rad, and then invite her to church. Why not? Right? Yeah, has she come with you before? No, she has not. Invite her to church. Yeah, and you you yeah. just you, you got to really just trust in the leading of the Holy Spirit too, yeah. because uh, that's what changes a person's life, you know, because. I know back in the day, people gave me literature, they gave me books, they gave me stuff. And I remember those moments, so it's cool. It's not in vain. Um, but the main thing is that you need to pray for the Holy Spirit to touch your life. Yeah. That she recognizes her need for the Lord, the emptiness of life apart from the Lord. And that's when the life change will, will take place. But you have to allow it to happen in in God's timing, that that's the key. And what I was telling you about my wife, when she was reading that book, she got to page 54, and I gave that book to her a month and a half before that. And when she got to page 54, she read this one part, and literally that's when the Holy Spirit showed up. It wasn't in my timing. It was literally in His timing. So just pray that God will reveal who He is and show up in her life. Cool, man. We love you, Rudy. Thanks for calling, brother. All right. Well, we're going. Uh, we're going to be going to break here in a couple minutes. Again, Lacey Sturm in concert at the Whiskey O Go Go, February fourth. There's tickets for sale. Um, you could go to uh, thewhosoevers.com and get more information or any of our social media. We'll see you guys back here in two minutes. 
More live with Ryan Reese coming up. Uh, call now. 1 888 564 6173. Or post your questions using the hashtag Live Ryan Reese on his Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. Uh, I think I speak for the entire administration when I say whoop de doo. Back to live with Ryan Reese. Come say what I want you. Loud noises! Right on. We are back and the phone calls are coming in. Uh, Sean, um, you just got a you just got a text message from someone and they also were were dealing with uh, anxiety yeah. as well. It's huge. Yeah. This is this is a big thing. Yeah, well, well my wife has about uh, dealt with it a little bit this la- last year, a little bit here here and there. And it is. It, it, it it's tough for sure. Um and there's people in my life that I know are solid. Obviously, my wife's solid. She's been walking on the Lord for a long time. My, my good friend Miner, he, he battles with it. He's a hustler. But, man, these are the ones that get knocked off their feet for a little while. Yep. You know? And like I said, you know, th- there's a mix of different things. I, I truly believe it's because of the fallen nature that we, we battle with, you know, the world that we see. That's why there's diseases. That's why there's sicknesses and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, anxiety is one of those things, too. The, the enemy can definitely intensify it as well. The enemy can come in the midst of our sicknesses a lot of times to discourage us. And that's what happens. Uh, a lot of times when you're taken to a place of weakness, um, if you allow the enemy to just kind of overtake your life, a lot of fear and all those things can come in. Yeah. The only way to combat it, I'm telling you, is is worship of God. Worship music always helps good. I know from my wife and, and same thing with my friend Minor. My, myself too, when I get overwhelmed, worship music, it puts things in perspective. I listen to Bible studies all the time. But sometimes I just need like praise music, mm-hmm. you know, recognizing that this is a battle taking place. And just judging by some of the texts that have come through, I saw another one online who battled with like um, anxiety and stuff like that. So this is a common thing. And I think one thing that the enemy likes to do is make us feel like we're all alone and nobody understands. Um, but the Bible even says that with temptation, um, it is common to men. All of, You're not alone. The enemy is... Um, like a roaring lion, we know that. And he looks to discourage us. For some people, it's sexual attraction, man. It, it's lust. It's perversion. But for other people, it's, it's this anxiety, this pressure. You know, and a lot of times when you're trying to hold on to something too much and you feel burdened and, and worrisome and you're carrying a load that's too heavy for you. And a lot of times I think it's put, putting things in perspective and going back to the basics like yep. we were talking about earlier. Um and just sitting at the feet of the feet of the Lord, 
and the Lord is able. That's one that I keep on saying this evening because sometimes you feel like it's impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Mm -hmm. So just hold close to the heartbeat of God when you're going through the storm, knowing that, understand this. I was talking about this last night, like in a teaching somewhere. Um, Temptation and trials are for a season. You know, even when the temptation of Jesus, the Bible even says that as Jesus was tempted those three times in the wilderness, it said that Satan left for a season. And in our minds, we're all familiar with seasons. You know, there's there's spring, there's winter, there's fall, there's summer. And, you know, sometimes when you're in the summertime and it's like really, really hot, especially when you're here in Southern California, you're like, at first you love it, you're going to the beach and everything, but when it's just so hot, you're like, man, I, I wish it would just cool down. Yeah. But you know, like falls around the corner, it's mm-hmm. going to chill out a little bit. And I think sometimes we need to be reminded that in the midst of our temptation and trial, it's for a season, it's going to pass, mm-hmm. you know, because a lot of times you can get overwhelmed. Yeah, it's going to give, you know, it's going to give. Yeah. It's tough though. All right, cool. Well, right on. We're going to go ahead and take this call from uh, JR up in um, Nor- uh, Norwalk. Uh, I guess we got a new phone system, but I don't know if this is like a comment or is this actually a call because it's not picking up for some reason. Uh, I think that's a comment. Okay. Well, let's see. He says, uh, awesome that you guys are always keeping it real and always honest. That's what's up. People need this. Thank you. Right on, JR. Thank you for that comment. We're going to go ahead. No, now none of these lines are working. Okay, let's see. How about this one? Uh, Jesse from Mission Viejo. Okay, I don't know. None of the phone lines are working. Well, so That's fine. And like with, with that comment, too, I mean, that, that's just amazing for us to hear as well. Because like me and Ryan always joke around, uh, being in the studio like this, you're not able to gauge what's taking place. Hey, oh, 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 there, there we go. go. Hey. We got, we got uh, JR. Yeah. How you doing there? What's up, hey, man? Hey, Shalom, brother. How you guys doing? Doing okay, good, good, man. <laughs> Woo. Hey, I'm a first-time caller, long-time listener, brothers. Dude, thank you very much, man. Out. Oh, cool. You're, 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 you're listening out in Norwalk, Norwalk right? About that. <laughs> yeah, I'm in Big Norwalk, 562 area, right next to Studio Downey, Calvary Chapel Downey, Calvary Chapel, Santa Fe Spring City, man, and Paramount, and all that good stuff, brother. Look, right on, look right at all on. your shout outs. It's amazing. Yeah, we love we love all the heads from Downey, man. Jeff Johnson and, and then his crew. And I used to skate a park out there out uh, in Paramount, right there by the, the cop station. Hold on, yeah, there's a deputy sheriff station. I'm actually a sergeant, so uh, I do law enforcement ministry with the LAPD. Uh, awesome, man. Cemetery station, and, and uh, you know, that's for the reason why I'm a little caffeine up, because I want to do a radio <laughs> <laughs> So I'm like, you know, CD, drop the coffee, drop the donuts, let's go, you know? <laughs> Dude, that's awesome, man. Well, thank you oh, for your man. service out there, man. That's It's it's cra- cra- crazy times out there in the streets, right? It is. It is. But, you know, you hear and see so much... Uh, you know, different walks of life, different talks out here, you know, whether it's Mexican, African. Uh, yeah. My boss, one, one of my supervisors is actually Jamaican. He just came back from J- the Jamaican holiday, him and his wife. And, uh, you know, he, he knows who he, he can count and depend on. You know, when the real ones, you know, when the smoke clears, you know, the, the real ones are standing right there. And that's uh, me and my partner, man. We always got his back, you know. And so that's how you know that, you know, we don't just talk to talk. We walk to walk, man. That's all we were. we're so glad and happy, so stoked, man, that you had Sonny on last Saturday and you got McKean uh, tonight. And we're just going to keep on promoting uh, KKLA and KOS, bro, because we need, you know, uh, people like you guys out there, man, to just keep on leading with Brian Heather Welsh from Corn and, and just keep on bringing them in, man, the whosoever. Man, I got to get a t shirt. I don't even have a t shirt yet. Man, you, know? you got you to gotta get a t shirt, man. <laughs> dude, that's awesome, dude. Yeah. Well, hey, thank, thank you very much, man. And we'll, we'll be, we'll be uh, praying for you guys out there in the streets because, you yeah. know, I know down that's in right. LA, it's. It's, it's 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 a crazy out there, man. You know, yeah, it it's a crazy is, world. But uh, but you guys are that that light in the darkness. I I have right. another friend that's a cop, and he says when uh when you know if he has to arrest someone, he just he puts on K Wave or whatever it yeah. is on the way back to the police station, and he'll start talking to him about God. He's right. like, I got them for like thirty minutes or twenty minutes till we get to the station. So yeah, he tries, you know, do, talk yeah. to him about Jesus. So that's awesome, yeah. man. Thank you very much for calling, dude. All right, you guys keep on rocking, man, and, and um, you know, I'll tell some more uh, colleagues and coworkers, man, because you want to get that window of time sometimes, uh, you know, when the Holy Spirit uh, tells you to, you know, spit it out, it's like, all right, spit it out, you know, because if you keep it to yourself, it, it, that would be the evil felony of the crime, you know? <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right, JR, take care, my friend. All right, you guys be blessed, man. Take care. Love right, you, brother. Man. Peace. Dude, that's so cool, man. That huh? was awesome. We got cops listening to us down out, out in uh, L.A. That's amazing. <laughs> but we have a lot of cop friends and a yeah. lot of friends that are firemen yep. and, and military guys. Oh, yeah. Always keep those guys in prayer. They're in the streets battling with a lot of stuff uh, nowadays. It's crazy the stuff they see on the news, man. 
Got to keep these guys in prayer always. It is crazy. Hey, so I'm confused here because we got this whole new board now, and it's uh-huh. like all these different colors, and green means hold. Which one means go? This purple one right here? I, I think the purple. All right, we're going to try it. Here we go. Um, Did it? I don't know. This new system's crazy. There Here we goes. go. There it goes. All right, Scotty, how you doing from Costa Mesa? This is uh, live with Ryan Reese. And what is your question tonight, sir? Hi. Hi, Ryan. How um, you doing? Good. My question is how could we take the gospel into the rehabs and treatment centers? Oh, good around question. Here? That is amazing. Uh, well, I, I know I personally speak in a lot of different rehab centers, and the way it works is, like, you're talking about the mainstream rehab centers, obviously, because Christian ones, the gospel's already there. So these yeah. ones that I go to that are not, um, uh, ma- they're a mainstream rehab, they're not a Christian-based, they have, yeah. like, a, a service once a week that's, like, their chapel, and you could go um, at your free will. It's not It's not mandatory. And I've been getting inv- invited by Christians that work in these rehabs that run these nights. So I've been able yeah. to actually go in and they'll tell them that the whosoever, you know, someone from the whosoever's movement is showing up. And literally when we show up, the whole rehab ends up showing up. And I just get yeah. in there and I just give them the gospel. And then what we do is yeah. we, we plug them into, um, we leave them like with, with the, the book of John that we get from the Gideons, the, the, the Bible Foundation. They give us uh, yeah. free Bibles, uh, the Gospel of John. So we give them those, gos- uh, those uh, little books. And uh, I've been literally hitting up tours all around Southern California going to these rehabs. Are you, yeah. do you speak? I mean, do you like want to go into rehabs and speak? I'd love to. I would love to. I would. I mean, I I go, you know, um, I I, I go lifelines on on Friday night, and I, I'll just walk up and down, handing out Bible tracts to the treatment kids out back smoking. Yeah, yeah, lifelines. You know? I was just there, right in uh, uh yeah. at Quarterstone Church. Yeah, that place is amazing. And you know what I love about that place? I don't even know how they got it approved, but all these people come from all these different rehabs that are not faith based, but they ship yeah. them in. Yeah, like they here, literally yeah. pull them up, and the whole place is like smoking and the whole thing, <laughs> and they all come into this room and fits like I don't know, like maybe four hundred people in there, and yeah. uh, they actually are able to share the gospel with them. It's it's amazing. Yeah, even on Sunday the the vans come, and it's just you know, I see these kids, and my heart breaks for them. You know, absolutely. And it's like some you know. I go here. My son, me, God. So, well, you know what? You, if you, if I was you, um, yeah, I would contact these rehabs that are close to you, and yeah. just ask them. Say, hey, do you guys have like a faith based chapel? You guys do, and if so, I would love to come out for free, and just come yeah. come speak to the kids, and and that I guarantee that I mean, God's going to be with you. He's going to open those doors that he's that he's going to want you to go in, and then you just go in yeah. there, and you just let them know about the gospel and that you love them. And um, God, the Holy Spirit shows up, and people get saved, and it's amazing. Yeah, that's awesome, Scotty. Keep doing that, man. This I can't tell you how many kids, how many youth I talk to that are messing around with drugs and alcohol, that are messed yeah. up, that are being raped, and I mean, there's so much crazy stuff happening in this world that we yeah. live in. Yeah, I mean, we're living in. I know it was crazy in Sodom and Gomorrah days. I, I right. know it. But now the fact that people have access to whatever they want at their fingertips, it's, yeah. I mean, the, these kids, you talk to these 12 year olds and it feels like you're talking to a 22 year old. Oh yeah. I mean, they're like, mm-hmm. they're on another level now. It's, it's crazy because what they're seeing on yeah. TV or on the internet. Oh yeah. And it's distorting them for sure. I would say this, man, Scotty, God's put a burden upon your heart for this. And that, that's for a reason. You know, that, that's what yeah. happens when you have a constant thing that's on your heart when you wake up. Like that's God stirring your heart. So like Ryan said, now take the steps of action. You know, look into a couple of places that are that are close around here. Maybe there's a place where maybe you can sit in one of those things as well and just be a presence and praying like yeah. in your heart and just loving on people and just building relationships like that. I remember when I came to the Lord, I had to do a couple alcohol classes. Actually, I had to do a year worth. And while yeah. I was uh, I, at that time, I just accepted the Lord. So. When I would have moments to speak and I, I would just drop little nuggets of truth, I saw that go a long way. So we'll be praying for you, Scotty. Thank right, you. Right on, brother. Thank you, man. All right. That's that's a that's an amazing call.
Oh, yeah, going to the rehabs, you know, drug... There's ad- so many of them, it's crazy. Drug addiction, alcohol, and it's so many age groups, you know, you're talking to, like, young kids, oh, but all the way up to, yeah. you know, 16, 70, guys, girls, it, it's a it's a very heavy, heavy thing. And it's a necessary because that's where the enemy just re- wrecks havoc on so many people's lives and really gets a foothold in their lives. We come from that background, so I know we've always had a burden for people coming out of the thing because... Coming out of drugs, it does. Those are one of those areas where you feel like you're never going to to get sober, and it gets tough. Right on. We're gonna go ahead and take uh, this this next call, uh, Yolanda from L.A. But um, if you need to call in, the number is eight 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 five six four six one seven three five six four six one seven three. We want to hear from you wherever you're at. Um, we're gonna go ahead and take this call, Yolanda from. I don't know why this. Thing, I'm having the worst That's time right. tonight. Hey. You get it down. No, but I'm pushing it, and it's still not coming through. It's Yolanda from uh, Skid Row. She lives we'll, out there on we'll, the shelter. We'll come back to you, Yolanda. If you hear us on the on the radio right now, we see your call. Can't get to you right now, but we'll we'll just stay stay tight. We'll get to you in a second. You know, with a lot of these calls that are that are coming in today, a lot of them have had with the the anxiety, with you know pressure. I got another one online right now too, and you know dealing oh, with drug Yolanda addiction just came and through. stuff. There you go, Yolanda. Yolanda just came through. Okay. Cool. Well, hey, you know, Yolanda, we're sorry. We're, we just got this whole new sound, this new system set up, so we're trying to figure it out up here. That's okay. So cool. So you're down uh, downtown L.A. What uh, What's your question tonight? Uh, yes, I'm a believer. Awesome. Praise God. And um, I, I became homeless about six months ago. Mm-hmm. Okay. And um, I, I believe in the power of prayer and and. Uh, sanctification and holiness. Mm-hmm. My question is, is that I'm down here in the battlefield, as you know, I've seen and heard everything that you could possibly think of. Yeah. But I have a desire to minister or to share the love of Christ to whoever comes in my path without pushing the gospel on him. What do you suggest? Since this is like a battlefield, but it's ex- it's kind of like exciting to me because you got souls down here right. that I want to just reach, you know? Yeah, no, um, I, I, I've done a lot of stuff. Um, I've, I've been down there a lot of times down in um, downtown L.A. at this. I've been trying to remember the name of this, this, this um, the Midnight Mission. Are you familiar where the Midnight Mission is downtown L.A. on Skid Row? Yes, yes. Uh-huh. So there's a girl there named Candace. She's a Christian. Uh, Midnight Mission started off Christian, but it's not now. It's mainstream. But there's a girl there, Candace. She's a Christian, and she actually um, does a lot of rad things in that area. And okay. she has the little team that you know they, you know, like they, they just opened this barber shop. So now they have people coming down cutting hair, and, and while they're cutting their hair, they're they're ministering to them. They even have like a Bible study thing going on, and they even like help feed people. And there's all these different like um, different avenues that you could serve. Um, down there at the Midnight Mission, but I would connect with her if you get a chance. Just uh, tell her that I told you about her, and okay. she'll get you plugged into some kind of ministry down there. I mean, that's that's what they do down there. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. called it's called the Midnight Mission right there in Skid Row, and her name's Candice. Candice, I'll remember that. Thank you. But I mean, Hi. besides that, I mean, it's it's down there. It's it's on. I mean, I, I walked through there. We went out walking through Skid Row at night. It was it was pretty crazy. It's like. You know, p- people are just living down there. There's the drug users, and there's people that don't use drugs. They're just there because they lost their jobs. And then yeah. you got the drug dealers. It's like it's 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 and full on. I think one thing that's really important too is like when I when you were talking about this and reading your your thing up here, what the Lord really put on my mind is, is Matthew nine verses thirty five to thirty eight, okay. where it's uh-huh. talking about that. When Jesus saw the multitudes, he was moved with mm-hmm. compassion. He saw them as weary and scattered, having no shepherd. And then it says that the, the, the harvest is, is ripe, but the laborers are few. Pray for the Lord of the harvest to send them into the field. And maybe that, that's where the Lord has called you in your life right now. One thing you, I'm sure you've already seen, a, a lot of times with people that are on Skid Row and stuff like that, a lot of them, they know the Bible, actually. That's one thing that you'll trip out about. A lot of them know some biblical truths and stuff. Some of them maybe have walked away from the Lord. Some have been shared with so much over the years. So a lot of times you you really have to win them over with a genuine care for them. You know, they they, they can read through. Have you noticed that already? Yes. I, uh, as a matter of fact, I live in one of the, um, 
Jelta's here, uh -huh. Weingart, and you know they have they, they have it set up where you have roommates as mm -hmm. well. If if you you know you live in one of the rooms, and also if they fill up the bed, right? Every time I get a roommate, you know, <laughs> I notice that every time they come in, they will come in and they will go and lay down. Well, they always see me reading my Bible, either praying or reading my Bible or listening to the radio. So they immediately know that it's something different about me. Yeah. And that's when they open up to me. Yeah. And I just praise God because um, you, you hear all the noise. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's all good. <laughs> I just praise God that, you know, he, my light is shining because I even, even the guys, you know, yeah. some of the guys down here, you know, they see a pretty thing, a pretty lady walking the street. Right. The Holy Spirit, God has protected me to where they haven't even tried to even hit on me. If anything, they step back and be cautious. Right. <laughs> yeah, totally. It's kind of funny, you know, because I'm like, Lord, I'm walking through all of this stuff, but it's like they don't even try to sell me anything or or all of that. And so I know it's just the Holy Spirit well, using me. I'm sure all the <laughs> listeners now, Yolanda, they, they hear your story and they're going to be praying for you as well Thank as you. as we will. OK, so Thanks. you still do keep doing your thing and just uh, keep us up to speed. OK, you stay safe okay. and be loved Thank by the you. spirit of God. Thank right you. On. you guys, too. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. So, um, yeah, it's uh, it's. You know, when she's down there, she's going to be led by the Spirit. Yep. You can tell she's already filled with the Holy Ghost. God's just going to lead her and, yeah. and talk to those individual ones. But a lot of them do know about God. They're just... Oh, I, there's I, a lot I, of people that actually go down there. I was on the streets. I remember earlier when doing ministry and, and you know, witnessing some people on the streets. And this one guy was giving him this, uh, like, scripture. And I just remember this guy on the streets. I kind of rebuked him and corrected him by what he said because he quoted the scripture wrong or whatever. It threw him. I, that always stuck in my mind. I'm like, these guys know him better. They can see through um, people a lot of times too. You need to have a genuine love for people. But you know what's amazing with her position is she lives there. Oh yeah, she's there. So it's not like people she like had, people are coming right. there for the weekend and then going back to their house. You right. know, who knows where. Um, she's there. She's with the people. And that girl, Candace, is, is amazing. So if she connects with them, that's that'd be really good. I like this next question um, from Sergio. If you're listening, please call in. Uh, we do have a little bit of time left. You could hit us up at 888-564-6173. And this is live with Ryan Reese. And I got Sean McKeon in studio as well. We're going to go ahead and take this call from uh, Sergio. Do what? Hit the drop button first, they said. Here we go. Up okay, this system's... There you okay, go. here we go. Got it. Hello, Sergio. How uh, you doing? Uh, how you doing, sir? Yeah, um, I've been a Christian for a while, uh, basically. So I just would like to find out some information about if God is a loving God, obviously. Yeah. You know, why does he allow uh, Satan to tempt his Christian people on a daily basis as far as, you know, temptations? Uh, origin of temptation, I would like to find out. From your perspective, Pastor. Awesome. Great, great question. Probably one of the most popular questions that are asked by people. If God is so good, then why is there evil? Why does it persist? Because if God is all-knowing, he's all-powerful, then either he's, um, maybe he doesn't want to do it. Or what, so what's the question? I mean, so what? what's the issue? So th this is, the, I think, the easiest way. God created the world as we see it. He, he spoke the world into existence. He created man. We know the fall of Satan from heaven. And as heaven, as uh, Satan came down uh, to the earth, and we know that the fall that take, took place in the Garden of Eden, at that moment, before that, man was cre created completely perfect, and it was in harmony with the Lord. Why did the Lord allow um, a tree to be put there? I think the greatest way is to show true love, you know, because it was of, of the will. You know, it, it will always come down to free will. When the, the man gave into it at that time, they died spiritually. And then hence, sin has spread through the whole human race. And from that time forth, even in the first prophecy of the Bible is actually found in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, that after Adam and Eve gave in to the temptation, it says that the woman, that this is what's going to happen, the snake is going to bite the heel 
but the Lord shall crush his head. And that just means that the Lord is going to overcome this in his timing. This is why Jesus came to the earth to uh, destroy sin, to destroy death, and bring us back into a relationship that we are designed for. The thing about the enemy working today, this is the thing. His time is limited. Satan's time is limited. Um, you know, looking at our world around us today, I know it can be so tough and the temptation can be um, there as well. But as a child of God, I don't need to fear any of the trials of temptation because the Lord can work out his purposes even through temptation and stuff. Um, even through the Old Testament with Joseph, he says that what you guys meant for evil, God had meant for good. And for us in the New Testament, Romans 8, 28, we know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. There are a lot of things that are tough to understand, but we understand this, uh, that God is greater, that he who is in us is greater than he that is of the world. And so in this, we do not need to be fear. I yeah, think no, Brian right, wanted to share something. Right, right when he called in, I thought about in James, when it says in James 1, it says, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles come your way, consider an opportunity for great joy. For when... You know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. And I believe that when you, when I, when I've been going through these trials and tribulations, what God's doing is He's producing this our Christian character. He's literally uh, strengthening our spiritual muscles so that we could be this this spiritual giant that God wants to use us for. I mean, if if we haven't gone through these, think about. You know, this is just a conversation between me and you, Sean. But yeah. think about if we haven't gone through the stuff we've gone through, just even as a Christian. Right. I mean, that has made my faith grown so much to where yeah. now, like, there'll be situations I'm going through in my life. My my wife's only been a Christian for a couple years, and I've already been there, done that. And I'm like, Crystal, we're good. God's got full control. Of this I've had a situation like this before, but since I went through before, he's he's uh, produced this Christian character in my life. And mm -hmm. that's 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 what I get out of it when when Satan comes in and, and God allows them like he allowed them to mess with Job. I mean, imagine I was Job the same Job thing right now. Hell, yeah. I'm right now I'm in, in chapter eleven with with Job. I mean, he has boils all over. He's like cursing the day he was born. Yeah. You know, naked I come, naked I go. He was over, it. and his wife's like, "Curse God and just die." But he 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 stayed with God. He knew that God has a plan for him. Mm -hmm. And all I know is. God produces Christian character. So whatever so God's doing, in, uh, huh? Uh, I was going to say. So basically, uh, God will never allow a uh, sort of uh, uh, a temptation that is going to be greater than a person can bear it, carry, it, right? And, and that's what the Scripture says, right? It okay. says that in First okay. Corinthians right. ten thirteen that there's no temptation given to men that's not common to man, but God is faithful, who always give a way of escape. I'm in the midst of the temptation. Great call, though. Great uh, call, Sergio. Sergio, read James. Read James. Uh, read James uh, 1, verse uh -huh. 12 and down. It talks a little bit more about that. All right. Okay. We got to go. So uh, God bless, guys. All, all right, right, man. Love you, brother. Thank you. Bye Thank bye. you all this for tuning in. with Ryan Reese. To right. connect or find out more about Ryan, click on ryan-reese.com. Check us out next Saturday at 9 p.m. for Live with Ryan Reese.